While you're riding, you're going to come to the end of the road, and the examiner or the instructor would give you an instruction, and they would say, at the end of the road, turn right, please. And that means you're coming to the end of this road into a T-junction. So, for the right turn then, we do a right mirror check to see what the traffic behind is doing. Um, we may need to do an observation if the traffic was too close, or if you had someone overtaking you, you would take a mirror check and possibly an observation at the same time. When you look forward, you're going to assess how far away the junction is, and if there are any junctions in between you and the end of the road, then we're just going to delay the indicator. So, looking here, there's no junction, so we put the right indicator on, and that tells people we intend to turn right at the end of the road. Once the indicator's flashing and we're happy, we're then going to do an observation over the shoulder, which would be known as a lifesaver for the manoeuvre over to the right. And if you weren't going to move that far over, um, you may do a little mirror check, which would give you enough information just to move the bike over maybe a foot or so. So in this position here, we would carry out a lifesaver and then we'd manoeuvre over into position. Now the manoeuvre is going to be far enough over towards the white line to allow people to know that you are turning right. What you don't want to do though is move that far over any part of your bike or body is crossing the white line as you approach the end of the road. Once you're in position what will happen is we're going to start to use the brakes and we're going to slow the bike down using brakes and gears on approach. Now the way to do that again is to use front brake followed by rear brake. While the bike is slowing down, what we'll do is we would go down through the gears. Again, while we're changing gear, every time you release the clutch, what you need to do is have a little bit of engine braking to slow the bike down on approach. So we use a combination of both. Once we get close to the junction, we're then going to release the front brake and come in here on the rear brake only. The reason we do that is because if I come in on the front brake, the whole of the front end of the bike will be dipping down, and while the front end of the bike's dipping down, the head's going to be down, and also you may be off balance. It may induce a skid if you hit any uh, oil or gravel at the end of the junction as well. So by releasing the front brake, it gives you maximum input on the steering, and also by having the rear brake applied, the front end of the bike will lift slightly as you use the rear brake on approach. Once we're coming in, we're going to have a good look into the junction both ways. And if the junction is clear and we've looked as far back either way into the junction, once we've made the decision that it's clear, we can ride slowly out of the junction, bring the bike into the middle of the new lane, cancel signal and then accelerate away. The other thing that might happen is when we get to here we decide that the junction isn't clear so we don't bother looking either side anymore we just look forward keep the bike nice and stable and concentrate on stopping the bike behind the line and also getting the bike into first gear ready to pull away. Once we've stopped we can look into the junction both ways and we'll check that it's clear if we stop for any length of time we need a lifesaver over the right shoulder and basically this just informs us that it's safe and there's nobody trying to overtake us because they're impatient or they want to get going a little bit quicker than us. Once you've taken the lifesaver, final look to the left to ensure that it's clear to the left, final look to the right to ensure it's clear from the right. Keep your head looking in the direction that you intend to travel and then we're going to ride out of the junction nice and gently into the new lane, cancel signal and then carry on. Again what we're not going to do is take another look to the left once we head off and the reason being the bike might end up going straight towards the kerb and if that was on the test then that would be a steering fault. And the other problem with that is if you do lose control and end up going a little bit too fast you may hit the kerb and that would result in a fail. Once in this position here, you can see that we've slightly angled the bike to make it easier to come out of the junction. What I don't want to do is I don't want to stop aiming straight or even aiming slightly left. 
this would in, this would make the bike the turn of the bike really difficult as I come out of the junction. So it's always important to try and aim the bike slightly left or slightly right as you're coming into the junction and always aim the bike slightly into the direction that you intend to travel to make the junction a lot easier. At the end of the road, turn right please. Mirror, just delay the signal. Little check, move across. Both brakes are slow down. Rear your brake to finish and then aim slightly to the right of the lamppost to come in and stop. Make the decision, look where you're going, out nice and gently to the middle of the lane, cancel signal and then accelerate away.